Okay, it's day 102 of this ginger germination experiment and I've got great news. There's a seventh shoe system coming out of a different position and you know if you look over here this belongs to the base of the tallest plant in the middle and I think that's a separate rhizome cutting and this might be from one of those that we thought would never germinate you know that was just attacked by mold. It was a shriveled husk of its former self you know one of the two rhizome cuttings that was a never to do well, never going anywhere. So that's uh, quite a surprise. It's day 103 of this ginger germination experiment. I was worried that this mini series was going stale, but there's some new action because I've been watering from the top and a lot more things to talk about in the future because of that. So we now have potentially eight shoot systems. So you already know about this one. It's the seventh shoot system that's popped up and you can see that it's pushing out the sand and that takes quite a bit of energy but these plants are rigid and sort of funnel shaped with a point at the top sort of like bamboo but not really you know it doesn't have anywhere near that kind of rigidity and hardness but these things grow very slow and it's just beginning to poke its head out and if we look over here there's another eruption so to speak so it's fairly obvious because you can see in wet sand uh, where things are coming out of you can see all those cracks in the the wet sand so that'll be eight shoot systems potentially other stuff could come out as well so that means my new strategy of watering from the top also is very important I'm gonna keep doing that in fact I'm gonna do that right now so I just watered copiously from the top and the bottom and based on the way this thing is pointing I have to say it came from a rhizome cutting that's shared with the central one so unfortunately I don't think this is one of those two rhizome cuttings that you know never ever had a bud come out and for this one it's less certain because it's so small but you know this is shoot system number eight so that's definitely a welcome sign Let's hope we can get this up to 9 or even 10 pretty soon. Let's talk about some basic plant biology here. Um, I'm not sure this is the shoot apical meristem. I don't think so. The way this is structured is, you know, you have all these nodes. A node is anywhere where this main stem, I wouldn't really call it a trunk or anything, um, has a juncture with leaves. And these are nodes. That's a node, that's a node, that's a node. Um, that's basically two nodes very close together. So the length of stem between two nodes is called the internode. So it's long here, it's very short between these two nodes. It's uh, slightly not as long here. This is a long internode. But you see the internode lengths here pale in comparison to that of a proper vine. So for a proper vine like this sweet potato, you have internodes that are much longer. And if you have really short inner nodes, that can result in a plant that looks like lettuce, which basically is all leaves and no stem, so to speak. So this is a new site for any of these plant spas. I've never watered the top and the bottom soil to the point where water starts oozing out of the water tray from the bottom. And that's what's happening now. So that means I definitely don't need to water anymore. The soil is 100% hydrated for the time being. And by tomorrow, with all that evaporation, you know, it'll probably drop to like 90, 80, even 70 percent, I'd imagine. Okay, it's day 106 of this ginger germination experiment. And I think there's been some growth, so let's do some measuring. We can talk about the new shoots 7 and 8 later. Okay, so I have a pen and notepad. I'll be writing all this down. You know, let's say this thing is a... Uh, close to 10 inches now you know a lot of the growth is just um, this funnel of new leaves coming out it's very thin at first so write that down let's see if I bother to extend this tape all the way down to the mud you know, this thing is like 15 inches and again um, 1 inch equals 2.54 centimeters I should really get metric tape measure at some point. Um, this plant is sort of curled towards us instead of just being away from us all the time. Hmm. 
very long. This is a very interesting plant too. I'll talk more about it later. 20 inches is a good estimate for this one. And you know, some of these estimates probably weren't as accurate as they should have been last time. You know, this one it's uh 11.5. Now this one is sort of crooked to this way, but I'll just measure it straight. So maybe 18 and a half. And finally we're gonna measure Big Bertha over here. I'd say 27. Okay, so let's talk about the results. Uh, this is a simple stick figure representation of the six shoot systems that were here, you know, more than a week ago. And basically, this small one grew from 7.5 inches to 10. That's a huge amount of growth. Um, this longer one, it was really curvy last time. Maybe I measured it wrong. I straightened it out as much as I could. I'd say, you know, it dropped an inch, meaning, let's just say no growth. And this went from 14.5 to 15. You know, that's kind of dubious as well. Not much change there. This longer one, 18 to 18.5. Um, you know, I mean, there could be a trend of just gradual growth. This is a slowpoke plant, but this one kind of fell half an inch. So my measuring isn't perfect because this is in a corner of my balcony, and it's just kind of awkward to bend over and do all this, talk and film at the same time. But, you know, this longest one, it went from, I would say, 26 to 27. Um, so that could be some growth. I think the more established plants are kind of growing very very slowly but I'd say the 7.5 to 10 that's not in the margin of error that definitely was growth so I think watering from the top has helped and when you zoom in and check out the shoot systems number seven and eight that's where the real new growth is and excitement shoot system seven and eight need no introduction and they're getting a lot taller you know I'd say one of them is two inches tall shoot number seven in the back and you have shoot number eight, which is maybe just only two centimeters. So five centimeters, two centimeters. That's a decent amount of growth. These things grow a lot faster in the beginning. Um, it's not really stem growth as far as I can tell. It's just kind of these stems, so to speak, are funnels of leaves. Um, if you look at this big one. You know, it just kind of feels all hollow inside, so it doesn't require the same amount of growth yet it's still so slow compared to other plants so this one really interests me um, this is the plant that kind of curved over a little bit meaning it shifted its position most likely due to underground activity so it has new leaves coming out we're getting a really good look at this process of how the new leaves are generated and if I'm not mistaken you know I'd say this is a rhizome and, you know, the sand hasn't gone anywhere, so why is this thing coming out of the pot? Um, well, if the rhizomes got a lot bigger, all of them, you know, were adding biomass, then that would kind of shift the soil and the sand up a little bit and further bury these. But this has always attracted my attention because it kind of stuck out. Um, I think that very dry period where I wasn't watering from the top and it was in the full sun, that might have triggered these ginger plants to start rhizome formation. So now that I'm watering from the top again for the last two weeks or so, or three weeks, you know, maybe that's triggering another generation of plants because it sure looks like a nascent bud is forming. Now if you look at that right there, that kind of looks like a bud to me. And this sort of looks like fresh ginger. You know, I think that could be a bud as well down there. So, we'll see what happens. We'll get a front row seat to this new growth and see the whole process. Okay, it's day 108 of this ginger germination experiment. And this morning when I left the house, I kind of took a peek at my plants on the balcony. And I thought I saw mushrooms. You know, they looked a lot bigger to me in the morning. But I think these are actually mushrooms. You know, I've been watering so much that... It's sort of like, you know, the forest or the jungle where the humidity on the ground is almost 100%. I think that could be something there. Not quite sure. Not sure what that red shape is over there. That could be something. Okay, that's definitely a mushroom cap. 
So we'll let these grow for another day or so and they'll probably get really big overnight and then we can see what kind of species this is. But this is extremely interesting. I didn't expect other things to grow because of the sand, you know. I have seen some weed seeds kind of fly around and you know it's more customary to have uh, little plants, weeds germinating, grasses and other tiny weeds. You know, but here's another fruiting structure. So it's safe to say that since I started watering at the top, um, maybe these got inoculated or there were already fungal spores present in the soil that came from the store. At the base of the central plant, the largest one, is a new bud. So that's quite amazing. We have new growth this late in the game.